learned how to be safe around dogs. And of course, these days, we don't have so many dogs around the street. And so it's very easy for people not to come into contact with dogs. And therefore, we now need, we think it's very important that we teach people, particularly teach children, how they should behave to make sure they are safe and that they approach dogs and engage dogs in the right way. So we're very lucky today to have with us Debbie Connolly. Now Debbie is a, what I would say is a celebrity dog trainer. Debbie was very closely involved with Dog Borstal. Debbie, is that yeah, right? I was. If you remember the Dog Borstal programme on TV, Debbie was very closely involved with that. So I'm going to hand you over to Debbie now. She's going to teach, tell you all, all how to be safe around dogs. Thank you, Bill. Can anyone hear me okay? I feel a bit like X Factor with this stupid thing on. And my hair's a mess, I know that. Don't, let's not go there. Uh, thank you for coming in this morning. Uh, we, we've thrown this talk in extra today. It should have happened yesterday. And thank you to the Kennel Club for fitting this in this morning. Kids and pets are obviously an important issue. We all see the terrible things in the press. We see the breeds that are blamed. And my personal belief is it's nothing to do with breeds. There are no specific breeds that deliberately want to kill your children. But the people behind some of those breeds don't care. So I want to go through a few of my versions of the tips. I'm a professional animal behaviourist. I did, I did do dog, dog borsal. And the question I always get asked is, is Mick Martin really like that? And I know some of you are thinking it. I can see it. Um, yes, he is. Uh, so I, wa I want just to go through some of the versions of how I've solved some problems, what I think about it. And uh, we can get somebody with a mic. If you've got questions, please, anything you've got to ask and talk about can help some of the other people in this room, okay? We do see terrible things. And I, I want to, to split the media stories into two different things. The things that we see with what we term as status dogs, the staffies, the rotties, the American bulldogs, who have done some terrible things to people and to children. I still blame the people. I work, I've worked with these breeds for 30 years. These breeds are dogs with very good qualities, if, like anything, bred and raised properly. So I don't have an issue with those breeds. And if you have any specific questions about some of the breed characteristics in your breed and kids, please do ask me. Um, I want to put those stories aside and look at two or three that you might be familiar with. The two or three you might be familiar with are stories about Sadly, grandparents' dogs. There's an awful lot of stories in the press where a grandparent's dog injured a grandchild. Now, those are slightly different in my mind in terms of how those things happened. One of the most recent ones was a case of a, of a border collie. And it was the grandparent's working farm dog, described as a very nervous dog, described as a dog that, that was a little bit worried. They had a child of, I think, just under two. And two is face height. And whatever you think about um, dogs and kids, having a child in your face is not necessarily quite as nice as you think it is. And it can be quite frightening. And this, sadly, this toddler tried to interact with this dog and unfortunately was bitten in the face. And you'll probably see a lot of these injuries are face bites. And that's sadly because they're often at the right height for that to happen. You have to look at some of the breeds and understand what a child, particularly your child, looks like to a dog. It looks quite frightening. They scream, they fall over, they've got toys that make the scariest noises that even have made me jump in a bass. So it looks a bit like a tiny little alien being sometimes to a dog that's never seen it. Now the one advantage you usually have where children are concerned is you know they're coming because somebody brought the news to me that the stork doesn't bring babies quite recently. So I've realized that you kind of know that they're gonna turn up. So when kids, when you know that there are gonna be kids in your dog's lives, there are things, and it's in the leaflets, you should be able to see the leaflets around, there are things that you can do to prepare your dog. Now, the things I've worked through with customers, and, and I'm talking about people who I've taken from two German shepherds who pinned a social worker up against the wall, to eventually the same family adopting three children. So I have done this for real. It's, I've worked with clients who've either got a problem, have a dog that they're not sure about. Preparation is the key. So one of my tips is, download as many sounds as you possibly can. Download sounds of screaming, crying, because you're gonna have to get used to it anyway, guys. Crying, screaming, running, playing, 
ridiculous sounds of, of toys and noises. It's quite frightening to your dog to suddenly be faced with this little tiny thing that comes in your house and screams a place down. It's frightened some parents as well. So what does your dog think? And your dog is physically at a more vulnerable height, however big, and the baby is often right in their face. So think about what your dog needs to learn. What does it need to do? It needs to learn about sounds, about movement. The next issue in the cases that I see are dogs chasing after children and grabbing hold of them. And people say they're just playing. Until those big teeth one day catch your child on the way past, and suddenly it's not funny and you tell the dog off. The other issue you need to look at is all of your basic training, all of it. If you can't control your dog and you can't get your dog to do the simplest thing for you, how on earth is it gonna be safe around your child? So take that opportunity and the build up to it to look at noise, at stimulus, get your child out. I'm not suggesting that you go chasing after people in the park and ask them if you could borrow their kids for a while. But there is a course that I do that does include this sort of thing. We socialise the dogs with stooped children. They are actually real but fully insured. And I do a course where people sometimes just bring their dogs for a few days so we can test it. Because how would you know? Are you absolutely 100% certain that if you stick a child in front of your dog, or your cat, I do treat cats, are you 100% certain that your dog is okay? We, most of us would say, our dogs wouldn't bite us, they wouldn't bite kids, they just wouldn't do it. So why, why is it happening? Not in the status cases, in the cases of parents and grandparents' children actually being hurt by the family pet. So do you really know what your dog looks like when it's faced with a child and not terribly happy, not terribly comfortable? And if you don't, you need people like me to help you. You need to see behaviourists, you need to see trainers, you need to see people who can say, well actually, that dog is a little bit worried and that one's not so you just need a little bit of um, knowledge to be able to judge and i'm not a huge fan of giving your kids treats to make friends with the dog because if you're not careful you can end up with a dog who every time it sees a child goes charging over to them and mugs them for biscuits so just think about the public's perception of you know your dogs as well So, there are things that you can do to prepare your dog. Dogs do react to things like hormones. So your child, when it's a puppy, before it gets hormones, is a very different thing to your dog when it actually gets hormones. And I see a lot of cases where this family pet was absolutely fine until the child started to develop. And when the child develops, the dog suddenly growls and is difficult and pushy. The dog's perception of that is one of, if you're a puppy in a pack of dogs, then an adult would tolerate a lot. We've all seen it, puppies jumping on the adult dog's heads, pulling their collars, pulling their tails. We've all seen that happen. What then happens with the puppy is it gets to a stage that's about five months old where the, the bigger dog says, push off. Stop standing on me, you're not a kid anymore. Grow up, I'm not tolerating it. Now that's what happens to a lot of family pets. They see your child and it's funny and it falls over the best of dogs can change when your child changes. So be aware, I treat a lot of cases where the puberty of the child was important in how to actually train the dog. Kids, you all need to know. I was one of those awful children many years ago, I'm probably I'm an awful grown-up, who sees dogs and would fright my grandma to death racing across the road to touch them. Now these days, I'd tell me off, because you can't. And if you see dogs that you want to um, talk to, please ask the owners. Because people need to, to be asked if their dog is actually safe for you to talk to. So please just ask them. That's, that's all we're asking you to do. Ask, get your dog ready, prepare it. Now, I, I, I'm conscious of the 11 o'clock silence. So do you, has, has anybody got some questions you want to talk about particularly before I move on to something else? And I know some of you have got dogs. Um, I was talking to these ladies earlier because you've got a, a collie. Yeah. How you choose the dog that lives with you is important. The Kennel Club here are talking about the accredited breeder scheme. They're talking about puppy farming. If you buy badly, whether it's because of health or temperament or from a puppy farm and you end up with a problem, 
that's your fault. Don't buy from these people. Please don't do it. The vast majority of the dogs I see professionally who have problems came from those sorts of places. They come from places where they weren't socialised in the first place. They're bred from parents who themselves weren't sound. There are certain things that you can do, but not a huge amount. So buy very carefully. Choose the right breed. Choose the right breed for your lifestyle. There's a lady up there with a Pyrenean Mountain dog. If you want a lovely, big, lazy dog, that's your dog, isn't it? If you want something a bit more active, board a collie. But collies have their own peculiarities in life, but can and do make absolutely fantastic pets. So if you're a parent or a grandparent, be sure that you know what your dog looks like when it's looking at your child or grandchild and going, do you know what? I'm not too happy. I'm a little bit concerned by this. You need to know what that looks like. And it doesn't always look like what you think it looks like. So please get help for those sorts of things and make sure you know what you're doing. The other thing to look at, as I said, is this preparation. I once got a phone call from somebody who rang me in absolute floods of tears. His wife was hiding upstairs with a new baby who'd come home that afternoon. His staff, he was locked in the kitchen screaming the place down. He said they'd come through the door with this new baby, which wasn't a surprise, as I said. They did know it was coming. And the staff, he virtually knocked this baby out of the lady's arms and went mental, barking, excited, running around. So I asked the obvious question, what was your dog like before the baby came? Well, he used to jump up and knock us over and steal our shopping. Did you not think to stop that before the baby came? No. She's upstairs screaming and crying. Their father is panicking. Everybody's worried. They want rid of the dog that night. This was 10 o'clock at night, I might add. And I did send one of my volunteers out to go and collect the dog because it clearly shouldn't still be there. But they got a bit of a telling off. Came back three months later when I'd already retrained and rehomed it and said, can we have it back now? No, you're not getting it back. So please do ask for advice. Make sure that you know what those warning signs are. Ears back, dog looking a bit concerned, dog backing away. And don't start shoving your children up to these dogs with biscuits going, be friends, be friends. Because the only, the only way that a dog can then say, I'm moved, get out of my space, I'm moving again, is it's going to bite. So please be careful of those things. I spend a lot of my professional life writing reports for court, assessing dogs, and some of the bites are completely and utterly unnecessary. They really are. And there is no shame in saying, my dog has never seen a child before. I'm not sure if my dog's going to be all right. There's no shame in saying, help me. And I feel not enough people do. I think they're just not quite getting how to ask for the help that they need. It is out there. Now, I'm going to be around quite a lot today. Um, if you want to stay and just have a, without the microphone on, if you want to stay and have a little chat and ask some questions, please do. If you see me about today and you want to ask me a question, please do. Please just come and talk to me. I would rather give you my time today than you have to pay me to come and sort it out on another day. That's possibly not quite true, but you get the point. Please, please, uh, they, they, I, I'm assuming they're going to do the two minute silence, so I don't want to rush you. Um, but don't take your dog for granted. Your dog is not born knowing what children do. They, that isn't automatic. And just because you love your kids and your grandchildren, doesn't mean your dog's going to. And you can write it a letter and explain it all, and it's still not going to make any difference. So do not end up being one of the statistics in the paper. Please ask for some help. Okay? Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you.